Thank you, Candy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar hosted by the Linux Foundation Europe. Today's topic will be presented by Open Mobile Hub, and we're going to talk about fixing challenges with mobile hub development across uh, platforms. Let's take a look at the agenda for today. In the first part, we're going to discuss how OMH streamlines mobile app development across various platforms. Next, we'll provide an overview of OMH architecture and technical details. Lastly, we'll move on to a live demo to see OMH in action. And we're going to end the webinar with a few call to action for you to get involved in the process. A few words about me. I'm Federica Nocerino, Communication and Marketing Manager at LF Europe. And uh, what is LF Europe? Let's spend just a few words on LF Europe and Open Mobile uh, Hub. Linux Foundation Europe is the European chapter of the Linux Foundation. And today's webinar is presented by the team of the last technical project hosted at the Linux Foundation Europe, Open Mobile Hub, OMH. OMH aims to tackle the challenges faced by developers, service providers, OEMs, and users alike in the mobile ecosystem through a unified open source framework. Throughout our session, we'll dive deep into how OMH simplifies cross-platform app development, enhances service interoperability, and creates a more inclusive and dynamic mobile environment. I encourage you to actively participate in our discussion and take advantage of the opportunity to ask questions and engage with the project. Now, without further ado, let's begin and giving you the stage to Preston. Thank you so much, Federica. So let me uh, begin by giving all of you a quick introduction about myself. So I started programming when I was very young and I uh, worked for several different types of tech companies. I worked for Google, Qualcomm, and some other tech companies. So I've been doing programming for many years in my entire life. So about uh, roughly about one and a half, two years ago, I came up with this idea about Open Mobile Hub. Uh, why? Because I have been facing a lot of challenges in de developing mobile apps, and I'm sure a lot of the apps developers are also facing similar challenges. So I came up with this open source project, hopefully to come up with a solution that could help ease some of this pain from the app developer. So let's dive into some of uh, this detail. So uh, let's look at some of the uh, mobile uh, operating system landscape. Obviously the largest one from uh, Google Android. Uh, here, uh, Android from Google obviously comes with Google mobile services, GMS services. So I'll call that uh, GMS uh, Android. And then Google also open source, the entire uh, operating systems is called AOSP. And since it open source, there's also a lot of companies are developed based on that open source. And uh, people basically also offer this type of mobile operating system without the Google GMS services. Um, and on, on top of that also the Apple iOS and also uh, Huawei uh, Harmony OS, next. So looking at the two main challenges I wanna highlight that I also face myself is actually offering a consistent user experience. When people developing apps, how they actually making sure that the apps actually runs on all these different operating systems and making sure that they offer consistent user experience to the end user, to the consumer. That's also very important. That's one of the major challenge. The other challenge is developer developing a new platform or always require additional resources, additional time, additional, additional money. Uh, if they actually can uh, develop one code base and make it run on multiple platforms, minimizing all these efforts, that would be a big plus. Um, so looking at this, you can see that this is a big mess. Uh, people focusing on different OS, you know, on different platforms uh, and making sure that, you know, all these two challenges are being, you know, solved. Let's look at some of these uh, inconsistent user experience, what we actually meant by that. Um, for example, uh, when some of the app developer develop the apps, assuming that the device actually comes with the Google GMS services, when the same app actually run on other non-GMS devices, as I mentioned earlier, based on AOSP open source uh, OS, they face issues. The apps actually try to call GMS as missing. So some of the error message came back, for example, on the left, you can see um, when people click on the Google login authentication, there's an error message. Sorry, there seems to be some problems uh, with Google. Please use another method. And then in the middle uh, and the second image, you can see here, uh, sometimes uh, when the app uh, start running, it detected there's no GMS services. It basically popped with a message saying missing Google Play services. It cannot, um, I understand and there's some missing functionality. 
And on the right of that is Google Drive access. Uh, some experience that I actually saw also myself is when I click on Google Drive, if the app's running on non-GMS devices, it basically gives no response. So no error messages, no responses that is not functioning. Uh, so the user could be very frustrated. And similarly on uh, IAP, in-app payment services as well. So looking at all the device type out there, I'm sure you experience a lot of these devices yourself. Um, developing an app that runs on all these devices, regardless of whether this is a, uh, Android with GMS or Android without GMS or actually Apple iOS or uh, Huawei Harmony OS devices, is actually very, uh, very diff difficult, a uh, lot of challenges. So that's why we actually created uh, Open Mobile Hub, this open source project under Leading Foundation Europe. So looking at the landscape of these mobile OS, um, we developed this to basically try to solve these two particular problems, consistent user experience and also cross-platform support. So how is actually going to work? So let me explain it for, um, in a very high level. And then Diego later on after, after this, this section, he will go through a lot more detail, technical details and architecture and also a live demo. So first, when the app developer integrate this open source, open mobile hub project into the apps, they make the apps available for consumer to download and run on the device. And at runtime, the apps will actually will detect whether the device actually have a GMS library on it or not. And of course, if the device actually is a, is a Google GMS device, have all this library present, uh, basically Open Mobile Hub would pass the request over to the GMS library to service uh, those requests. And alternative, alternatively, if the device actually does not have GMS library on it, then Open Mobile Hub would basically implement similar functionality using alternative methods. So for example, for Google login authentications, Google offer some web API basically fulfills similar functionality. So we are not uh, from within our own, uh, Open Mobile Hub uh, framework, we are not going to be using the GMS library, but instead we are using the web API from Google to fulfill similar functionality to enable that the apps still perform the same way, even though GMS is not present, and then able to offer login authentication and also maps and some of the other additional functions. And of course, other OS platform also support it, uh, and Harmony OS is also in the future roadmap. And one of the major uh, architecture that we developed from, from the very first day is actually to incorporate this OMH plugin architecture. This is very important because obviously Google, Microsoft, and all these big companies have their own services. And there's a lot of other smaller companies offer similar services as well. So what we actually uh, come up with this architecture is an enable the open source community to develop additional services as part of this open mobile hub framework. So but that uh, offer apps developer a very easy way by flipping the switch. They can actually switch from, for example, from using offering Google services to the user or switching it to Microsoft, offering Microsoft login authentication without a lot of code, code base changes. So that is actually a big advantage of Open Mobile Hub offering all these different service provider services, leveraging the open source community. And this is also part of this webinar is invite all the uh, open source community members to try to also think of a way to contribute to this Open, uh, open Mobile Hub plugins. And that would give developer a lot of choices and flexibility and also give it more options for the end user to choose from. So that's a, a very good benefit. So I will highlight also the three major ones that we believe are the major benefit of Open Mobile Hub. One of, obviously, I think we have been talking about this. This is open source project. Entire code base is available on GitHub. Anybody, anybody can see, anybody can contribute. So all this flexibility, freedom, high quality security compliance, and all, everything is basically out there. And the second most important benefit, I believe, is the open mobile ecosystems. Non-restricted tools and services delivering high quality experience on all the mobile platforms to millions of users. Of course, the, uh, the third one is reaching you know, more global user. So integrating with OMH, basically open up the door with you know, access to a lot of these services, regardless of GMS, non-GMS and other platforms, and able to basically offer all these variety services to a global user and without vendor lock-in. So that's, a, that's pretty much a key uh, benefit. So now as Federico mentioned earlier, 
Uh, this entire project is under management by the Indian Foundation Group. So what does it mean? So it means, obviously, Indian Foundation is a reputable, reputable um, open source organizations that have been supporting a lot of open source projects. We are actually very proud to be part of the open, uh, open source community, basically managed by the Indian Foundation Europe. And uh, most importantly, the Indian Foundation Europe offer this project uh, the open uh, neutral governance for global collaborations, adoptions of this project. And also there's a lot of awareness being built. Uh, this awareness is also part of it is to make more people aware of the benefit and also aware of this project and then contribute to this project and then able to leverage a lot of the marketing events that will be uh, driving to basically increase the uh, more collaboration in the open source community. So looking at also Linux Foundation Europe, also the other reason why we are so glad to be part of that is Linux Foundation Europe have other projects also for the lot of thousands of other projects that they manage. But these two projects are very similar. Uh, the way that is actually promote openness and collaborate, uh, collaboration interoperability and also options for the end user developers. So for example, on the left, Open Water Foundation. So the mission of Open Water Foundation, I'm not sure you heard about it, but this is a very important project is to develop open source engine to enable secure interoperable multi-purpose wallet for payment. Um, and the big companies like Google, uh, Visa, Accenture, Futureway, Microsoft, you know, Swisscom, all these companies are supporting this initiative, which is very good because everybody need a wallet that whenever they, wherever they go in the world, they can actually use it, right? Not worrying about downloading a new app or local, local app uh, uh, platforms. So this Open Wallet Foundation uh, have a very in, important um, a strategy and I think we are also aligned with that is to offer something like this also as part of the open mobile uh, hub uh, uh, framework that developer can easily use and access to this open wallet. And on the right, you can see the OpenStream Map Foundation, which is also uh, very important. Uh, Meta, you can see Meta, Amazon, TomTom, Tom, Microsoft, all these company, big company, they're supporting this. What, what, what is interesting is they're not doing open source, source code, but they're actually doing open data. So all this map data they're building, they're building all the quality assurance process, they're building all the data schema, making sure this is a high quality maps that companies can use. So as part of Open Mobile Hub, of course, map is one of the key functions that we developed from, from the very beginning. So we are also looking at in the future roadmap to support using this overture map uh, data to offer that for the uh, developer to use. And last year, we've been working also very closely with Linear Foundation Research uh, Group to develop this um, uh, research paper to talk about new direction for the mobile industry. So this paper, uh, if you get a chance to check it out, um, this paper actually talk about the innovation, you know, slowdown in smartphones, talking about some of the uh, 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 dominant company driving, you know, 99% of all the smartphone sales, and also talk about some of the regulatory changes, um, for example, the DMA, DMA regulation in, in the EU, and also some of the challenges these companies are facing, and particularly all the app, apps developers are facing. And they interview a lot of companies, uh, industry experts, to came up with this uh, paper. So I strongly recommend uh, if you get a chance to check it out. Um, let me talk about also the OMH um, roadmap. Um, so last year, we released OMH 1.0, and it includes login authentication, map, um, map location, and also cloud storage. And we, are, we have been working on OMX 2.0 since the beginning of this year. And one of the major features that we'll be adding on to it is the support of React Native. Why is this important? Obviously, cross-platform. So we'll be adding also not just Android, but also adding other uh, support like iOS. And then in the future, uh, roadmap, we are also looking at supporting like mobile ads, in-app payment, um, in-app messaging, app security, how many OS next support, um, and Flutter, and also... Um, uh, Expo. So if you look at the below, uh, some of these OMH plugin, as I said, this is a very important um, architecture of OMH, offering extensibility with uh, the um, uh, plugin in mind to offer these additional services. So for example, um, in maps, you can see that uh, we will be offering as part of uh, the OMH uh, plugin, supporting uh, Google Maps, uh, Azure Maps from Microsoft, Mapbox, OpenStreetMap, and Apple Maps. And then for OMH 2.0 authentication, we'll be supporting Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Dropbox. And then cloud storage is support um, Google Drive um, and OneDrive from Microsoft and also Dropbox. Of course, 
this is a, a very small set of um, plugins. And that's why we would strongly recommend and, and also uh, invite all the open source community members. If you come up with the new ideas and you have you have time and resources to contribute, please help us contribute to this uh, OMX plugin and then add more plugin to support additional services that developer can, can benefit through this framework. So for uh, open source uh, uh, OMX 2.0, uh, a lot of these are already released on GitHub. So after this webinar, if you're interested, please go to uh, GitHub and check it out. Uh, we have login authentication, um, maps, location, and storage for Android native or, or already available on GitHub. And we will be releasing also the uh, React native portion of it uh, very soon. So let's look at some of the uh, demos uh, and also some of the partner integrations. So for OMH authentications, uh, we integrated OMH with WordPress and Rocket Chat. Um, uh, so if you look at um, WordPress, uh, when you're running the apps on uh, non gems devices, when you click on the Google login, it's actually failed. So by integrating with OMH authentication modules, we can offer a similar user experience, consistent feature functionality, regardless of whether the device actually have GMS or not. So that uh, you can see the, uh, the left um, image is actually the result that basically user can seamlessly uh, integrate with the uh, services. And Rocket Chat, uh, some of this animation you can see also similarly offer uh, the authentication uh, through uh, OMH uh, auth. And next, I want to show you also some of the uh, partner integration with Maps. So we integrate it with uh, Signal and Expensify. So you can look at the uh, Signal apps on the left side here. You can see the error messages is very small. So when the user is trying to share the location with their friends through the Signal apps, uh, if they're running the apps on non-GMS devices, um, this error message actually pop up very difficult, difficult to see. And of course, the map function is not functioning. So it's for straight user because they expected this to work. Um, with the OMH maps integration with Signal, you can see on the, on the middle image here, uh, map shows up. Uh, people can share locations uh, with their friends, and that's no problem. It's basically consistent with other devices, with iOS, with also uh, Android GMS devices. It's consistent user experience. That's important. And then Expensify also, um, submitting expenses, also highlight the location of the maps by using the OMH maps. They can also easily to make, make sure that this functionality can be supported on multiple platforms. So, Open Mobile Hub Technical Solution Committee. So what do we do? So we have five voting members. I'm the, I'm the chairperson for this uh, Technical Solution Committee. So what we are trying to do is we, we set up the overall direction of the entire project. We make sure the technical roadmap and features and architecture are aligned with all the key stakeholders and also approving all the project proposals, discussing, you know, basically seeking consensus among the team, making sure that we are making the right decision for all the technical matters around the project. And of course, communicating with external parties, partners, industry organizations, making sure that we address all their needs. So we have a regular meetings basically every every month, uh, first week, uh, first Wednesday every month. Uh, I encourage also you, if you have time to join, uh, welcome to join a TSE meeting. Uh, that the next one is going to be the August 7th. So with that, uh, let me pass to Diego, and he will be going through the OMH architecture and also the technical overview. All right, thanks, Preston. Uh, let me share my screen. Please. Cool. All right, so you should be able to see my screen right now. All right, uh, hi everybody. I'm Diego Zuluaga, uh, Open Mobile Hub Technical Solution Director. Um, I joined this project about a year and a half ago, but before joining the project, I was part of the Android DevRel at Google as Android uh, Developer Relations Engineer. And um, as part of the uh, a future in the vision of OMH, 
um, I, I realized that there is a gap in this in in the current picture of mobile development. Um, I help uh, thousands of developers incorporating the features from the platform on Android open source project. However, uh, based on that experience, um, when I joined the project, uh, it made me it clicked it clicked on me. It made me realize that uh, in order to have an open ecosystem of mobile applications, we need a platform that allows uh, developers to build more efficiently these app, their apps. So let's take a look a little bit of uh, the current picture, right? So when developers start building apps, and I'm, this is kind of reiterating what uh, Preston just uh, walked you through, but I'm going to make it a little bit more graphical and uh, more specific about the SDKs, right? So as a developer, this is the current state. Developers are frustrated because the lack of standards and uh, proprietary components that slow down the mobile development, right? So it's incredibly challenging for, uh, for developers to build apps. Uh, you need to have multiple teams. Every time that you want to switch one service to another, you you're running into all these challenges. Um, why cannot be like switching uh, from regular electricity to solar energy at home, right? Why, why cannot you make that switch so easily, right? Uh, for developers, so this is the, the full picture. Developers, uh, the Android open source project, um, if you build an Android open source project, it's kind of like a single unit code base. Of course, there are some variations of uh, open, the, the project, but for the most part, it's a single block, right? And this is all great until uh, more components start coming into the picture, right? For instance, Google Play services, it's a layer on top of Android open source project. It's a system service that enables multiple SDKs, right, from Google, right? In this case, we're talking about Google Maps, authentication, drive, ads, messaging, safety net, play integrity, building in our purchases, and many, many more. So as soon as, as a developer, as soon as I start developing my apps with these SDKs, my app becomes tightly coupled with Google Play services. What that means in practical terms is my APK or my app bundle cannot be transferred or uh, cannot run on different variations of Android devices, right? So that don't run Google Play services. But okay, developers know how, we know how to work around. Uh, and then definitely there are many choices in the market, right? We see there are a plethora of solutions for maps, Mapbox, Azure Maps, OpenStreetMaps, and storage. You have a plethora of services as well, like Dropbox, OneDrive. For in-app purchases, you have more. Uh, and for messaging, and you can keep going. But there is a challenge with this approach, right? The challenge is that all these SDKs are completely different. Their interfaces are completely different. Everybody has to, uh, every time that I use one of these SDKs, I have to hard code my app specifically for that SDK. So swapping out and swapping in one service provided with another is not as easy, right? And that's in it's incredibly difficult when you need to deploy an app in multiple regions in the world, right? So if you are going to a country where a, a in-app purchase provider doesn't operate, you have to write a completely new version of the implementation of your in-app purchases to meet those standards, right? All right, so if we now, if we move into, so this is kind of like swapping. So when we see Open Mobile Hub into the picture, we see something like this, Open Mobile Hub, um, fits right in the middle, right? By doing that, it, what it attempts to do is there are, we acknowledge that there are native developers that build their apps in native technologies. And there are many benefits to this approach, but there is also uh, many developers working on cross-platform frameworks. And there are pros and cons to each approach, right? Uh, when we talk about Android, they use Android Views, Jetpack Compose, Kotlin Multiplatform, uh, for iOS, they have more technologies for React Native, of course, but Open Mobile Hub attempts to bridge that gap. 
The idea is that um, by providing native frameworks as well as cross-platform components, you will be able to live in both worlds. And eventually, if the decision is to migrate to a cross-platform framework, developers can do so, right? So to give more specific uh, about the architecture about OMH, we talk about a two-layer architecture. OMH is a two-layer architecture. What that means is that um, OMH is not trying to convert developers, of course, because uh, these are apps that have years in the making, right? So when a mobile or a native developer that build their app in Android, they might want, they want to stay there. However, there are benefits of using OMH in terms of there are common interfaces, unified interfaces, right? So our approach to this um, problem is to build a map interface, an authentication interface, and a storage interface. And we will continue to add more interfaces for each one of these modules. And on top of that, service providers implement plugins or components that implement that interface. So on the layer one, if you are using the map interface and you decide to swap out a map box and want to swap in Azure Maps, the it's completely transparent. It's the only things that the developer needs to do is to, to switch in their code base what provider they want to start using from now on, right? Now, on the layer two side, uh, OMH provides it's on the cross platform, right? So there are OMH provides uh, components on this layer in a similar way on layer one. These layer two components rely on the layer one components, and there are also common interfaces. So the uh, developers and service providers that want to surface their services. They only need to implement these interfaces and their services will be automatically available for develop, uh, developers. All right, so moving on, um, looking this kind of like a diving deeper into this is how do you see this in a, in a React Native app? I'm gonna, this is for, for the sake of time, I'm showing, showing only the React Native app, but. As I mentioned before, we have in React Native and Android. So in this case, um, the first thing that you need to do is to, um, in OMH, import the modules from Open Mobile Hub. There is a map score. And then you import the service providers plugins. In this case, we are importing the Maps, Google Maps provider, OMH Maps OpenStreetMap provider, as well as OMH Maps Apple Maps iOS provider. What that means in practical term is that when you initialize the module, uh, the Maps module, you specify which provider you're gonna use for what type of device. If you are using an Android GMS device, in this case, you are going to use the Google Maps, Maps which is compatible with the device. But if you are running on a non-GMS device, you're planning to use an OpenStreetMap provider in this case, or you can switch it to Mapbox or TomTom Tom or Google uh, or Azure Maps. For iOS provider is the same case. You want to use OMH Maps, Apple Maps, iOS provider, or Google Maps as well. And now the declaration of this, uh, how you declare this map and how you specify where you want to show it. This is an app, and you just need to use the OMH Map View component. Now, uh, seeing it in action, I'm gonna switch to my screen. All right, so what you're looking here is a non-GMS device, and I'm going to show the, the maps uh, implementation in React Native. So what you guys see here is that OMH maps, we have these three providers, OpenStreetMap, Mapbox, and Azure Maps. And uh, if we wanted to see the plain map in an open strip map, you see that you can, through the interface, you can actually have access to the view and change the width and size. You can actually uh, uh, switch to a different provider like Azure Maps or Mapbox. If we switch to this one and we go to the location sharing, we will be able to see Mapbox 
and find my current location, right? Now, if we want to leverage other capabilities, uh, OMH also provides the interfaces for markers, info windows, polyline, polygons, and styles. What that means is that um, uh, right now you can manipulate all these uh, views and also the components in a map. You can actually change everything from React Native as if you are interacting with the same component, regardless of the of the service provider. And if we look at the a marker and the info, a window maps, we're gonna see kind of like different uh, type of information about these uh, window properties, right? So we can also change the 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 rotation, we can use different features to access these capabilities, but this is all available for all maps. The developer, what we are doing effectively right now with this app is to switch one provider to another without having to write or modify your app with a new code base or a new SDK. It's everything is based on the OMH interface, right? So it, the same is for polylines and polygons. In this case, we can see that we can change the width, we can change the color. This is for more complex type of maps, kind of like navigation and um, a polygons as well. Yeah, we can randomize, we can change the width. These are just sample apps to showcase the features that are, are available through the SDK. Uh, and we invite developers to implement these features through OMH into their apps. And you can change the style as well, right? Uh, styles are not supported for, from uh, on Azure Maps, so it's not available, right? So uh, let me go back to the presentation. All right. Now, what you just saw here is... Um, an implementation of a React Native app using OMH maps. Uh, they, these, are, these are the steps to implement it. It's very straightforward to leverage OMH. The first thing is you need to um, install the components, the modules, the map score, and the plugin that you want to leverage in your app. Once you install them, you declare, you import the components that you want to use. And then as I mentioned before, you specify which provider you want to use in your app. There are three uh, properties, the GMS provider, the non-GMS provider, and the iOS provider, right? Then the declaration in your app is just about including the OMH map view. And if you want to manipulate uh, the behavior of your map by including markers, polygons, and polylines, um, it's through the standard API of OMH interfaces, all right? I'm not going to uh, delve too much into all the features available in OMH, um, but yeah, uh, the documentation speaks for itself. We have created multiple um, uh, compatibility matrix that showcases which features are available in the product. Um, definitely there are some differences between service providers. So some of them might not have all this information or not, not have all these capabilities, but everything is documented in the SDK also. Um, when you try to use one of these functionalities, it will present a warning, making sure the developer is aware that that functionality is not available. All right, so now moving on with the, the next one. We're talking about uh, storage and authentication SDKs, right? For storage and authentication SDK, I'm going to switch back to my, my device. All right. And I have um, the storage application, OMH store sample app. The sample app showcases three different providers, Google, Dropbox, and Microsoft. Uh, these are the three service providers available right now. Uh, but anyone is welcome to implement the interface and surface more service providers through OMH. 
So let's showcase login uh, with Google. The first thing is we are going to authenticate. As you can tell here, because these are non GMS device, we are using the implementation that uses custom tabs. In a GMS device, you will use the implementation that uses the actual dialogue, the native experience. In this case, when you use the custom tab, you get the account that you're going to use, and it's going to ask for consent from the user to access files on Google Drive. Once you grant access to it, you will be able to see all the files that are available. And then you will be able to, uh, in this app, we try to include some affordances to change the views into a more, into a list or in on a grid. In this case, we are there are two files in here and we're going to access through this app, um, the SDK and uh, use some of the operation of the SDK. So in this case, I'm going to, uh, up, for example, upload a file. This file is stored in my, on my device. So I'm going to upload this one. In this case, it's using the Google Drive a API, REST API to upload the file. And then I'm able to see the file that it's uploaded in Google Drive. Um, then if you want to, there are other capabilities available through uh, OMH SDK. You can access the metadata about the file. You can see the original JSON file, which contains other properties available through the, uh, the API, right? Other capabilities available through OMH is being able to access and change permissions on the files. Um, you can change the permissions on the, or add permissions for a specific user. Say, right? And then this is a user you're trying to invite in with, there is no Google account, right? So it's, you can tell that they, that is it, it's using the API from Google and it validates that the user exists. All right. If you it also allows you to manage multiple versions. In this case, I uploaded only one file, but if I attempt to upload the same file again, you're gonna see that there are more, there is a second version on this file. Now version one and version two. And uh, yeah, you're able to download the files that we actually um, uploaded. So in this case, I'm going to, down I just downloaded sample PDF and sample PDF contains, yeah, some superhero uh, image. All right, so, I mean, this is just, um, th there are many more functions available for in, in OMH. And um, there are more capabilities available in here. You can delete the, uh, the file like a soft delete, which that means it's putting in the, tr the trash can, or you can permanently delete, delete the files. And all of this is accessing these SDKs or these APIs under the hood through the same interface, right? So it's important that, to realize that we are not hard coding this app with three different SDKs but we are using one SDK, one API, and under the hood, we do the translation uh, to each uh, particular service provider. All right, so with Dropbox, it's a similar, similar uh, implementation. Uh, you use the custom tab to get access to the files. So in this case, I'm authenticating with um, um, a Dropbox OAuth 2.0. And I'm able to see that uh, it's actually uh, asking for consent from the user to get access to the files, all right? And now I see a different set of files available on the folder. Right now, there are some features that are not available. They are currently in development. So uh, uh, just to be completely open about uh, the current state of the project, right? So we are, we're still finishing the, this component. But the, for the most part, the features that uh, you guys see here, you can upload the file, or in this case, uploaded a second version of it. I didn't, um, I didn't update it. So you, you don't see as, a, as, a, as two versions. So if I update it, 
it should be a second version. Yeah, it sounds like the API is not uh, doesn't work similarly to, and that's why it showed that message that the file wasn't updated. So it's possible that uh, we need to check if that supports uh, multiple versions. But yeah, in this case, accessing the files, downloading the files, if I'm going to my files, let's go to my files. And I go and access the the files, the, the one that I just downloaded. Yeah, it's a file that has a, a a text message in it. So, and in the same way that I described the previous functionality with Google Drive, you should be able to access the other functions like delete, update, looking at the metadata, having access to the um, information of the file. Of course, then the, the metadata is completely different. Um, but you you get you name it you have access to all this information as well. Other functionality that is in the app is that you can do search. This search happens in device, so it's not that it's search on the on the on the SDKs directly. For Google Drive, we actually do the search um, directly from from the API, the REST API on the cloud. All right, and the last one is Microsoft. Right with Microsoft. The authentication is, is it uses the uh, OAuth implementation with Microsoft Account Live, and I'm, I'm authenticating with uh, my test account. It, it in the same fashion, it's using the consent from the user. And once I authenticate, I'm getting this error message. There is a bug that we are, are currently fixing, um, and the, right now apparently it's not returning the uh, JWT token. Uh, formatted properly. We, we are looking into it. All right. Um, there is many, much more to it, of course, but for the sake of time for this demo, we are, I'm kind of like condensing these demos into a very quick, um, uh, very quick and dirty uh, demo. But um, yeah, in a deeper dive, we can dive and learn more about these sample apps and SDKs. All right, so I'm going back to my presentation and continue to with the slides. All right, so looking how we do this in, um, how would we implement these features in, a, in an app? In this case, I'm going to showcase in a Kotlin app. Now the dependencies look different, of course. Uh, first, you need to specify which modules you want to use. In this case, if you're going to use the storage API from Google Drive, you specify the non-GMS for non-GMS devices. For GMS, you specify the GMS version. For OneDrive, is the same one, and the Dropbox is also the same one. Uh, we don't have different because they, they are both compatible with um, GMS and non-GMS devices. Once you specify that, you need to, of course, what I showcase here is uh, two SDKs. One is the authentication, and the other one is the cloud storage SDKs. For the authentication, you need uh, the OMH storage SDK, use the authentication SDKs. So in this case, we need to first specify which GMS and non-GMS implementations or uh, service providers we're gonna use. So in the step number one, if you are using Google GMS Drive SDK, we specify that in here. And if we use a non-GMS, we specify as another path, as add non-GMS path. Once you have this client, you specify the scopes that the app is going to use. And of course, the client ID. This client ID comes from each service, service provider, in this case from Google Cloud, you will be able to get a client ID to get access to the files. Uh, for Dropbox, you are going to get another client ID and, and so forth for uh, OneDrive. Once you have this client, then the, 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 the time comes from using the out provider with the storage provider. In this case, it is, it's similar, right? You For a storage provider, you use the path to use the storage GMS path and the storage non-GMS path. In this case, is um, Google Drive, OneDrive, or a Dropbox. 
and I think I made a mistake in the previous in the previous section. In the previous section, is the authentication providers that you need to that you need to specify. And so, while, so in the step number two, once you have this, you can declare a storage client. In the, the storage client, you pass the OMH out client uh, to be able to access all the operations to access the files. So in this case, uh, when through the storage client is that you have access to all the functionality available. Uh, in this case, uh, the, what I'm showcasing is listing a file and you pass the parent ID, which is the, the header, uh, the, the root folder pretty much. And uh, as uh, then you specify two callbacks, add-on success and add-on failure. What that means is that um, you handle and the app you handle when the the client returns the list of, of files, you'll be able to display the files. Only if there is an, any exception accessing Google Drive or any service provider, you you will handle it in the add-on fail uh, add-on failure. Other available operations are create file, delete file, upload, download, and update. Uh, as I mentioned, all this information uh, is part of our documentation. We have very comprehensive documentation, which uh, is available through our website and directly in GitHub. Um, I encourage you to check this out, uh, learn how the SDK is familiarized with the sample apps and submit any issues um, um, on these SDKs. All right. Now, um, our call to action to the developer community is that we cannot this do by ourselves. Uh, this building the, the, the interfaces, making sure that the interface is unified across all these providers is very challenging. The, hence, we are building this in an open source fashion. We need to make sure that the whole community is involved. And uh, we are kind of like getting started with these, with these providers, but we acknowledge that it is huge the number of service providers out there. So for app developers, for service providers, OEMs, getting involved is crucial for the development of OMH. So please join us. Uh, we encourage you to uh, do it um, and contribute with code. So we welcome code contributions, expanding the SDKs, the interfaces. The interfaces might not be are fully implemented, uh, but we are trying um, the best we can to implement each one of the functions and to have parity. And we are trying to document as much as we can what are the gaps between service providers. All right, um, and last but not least, yes, um, we, um, if there is a chance to incorporate this into your app, uh, please make sure to uh, let us know. We are interested in use cases and uh, success stories about OMH implementation and let us know. We are open to uh, any feedback and uh, collaborating together. With that, I will hand it over to Candice. Thank you so much. So I think we're going to move on to Q&A. Uh, Federica, did you want to take over that? Uh, sure. So um, thank you so much, uh, uh, Preston and Diego, for the insightful discussion and the overview on the Open Mobile Hub framework. Um, there are a few questions. We open the floor to question right now. So if you want to start typing your, uh, your question, Diego and Preston will be happy to answer to you now. Yeah, I see one question about container base, right? Yes. So the first question is uh, by Jayakar, and he's asking. They're asking if it's container based. Thanks, Jayakar. Um, yes. Uh, no. It, OMH is not container based. OMH is um, sits at the top of the app, so there is no need for kind of like running any a environment separate from the actual uh, mobile device running GMS and non-GMS device. And so it sits as an SDK. You just need to declare the dependencies 
In, as I mentioned, for React Native, you will use Yarn on NPM to import the dependencies. And for Android, you use Gradle to specify the dependencies and import them directly to your app. I hope that answers your question. Let me know if uh, in the in the Q and A box. We have uh, other questions from Benjamin, uh, actually multiple. So I'll start. Uh, the first yeah. one is on Google Maps access to known Android platforms like iOS, Harmony OS, and OMH framework. Second question, open source Google Firebase, Superbase. And the third question is Petal Maps so supporting the future roadmap for OMH. Sounds good. I'll, I'll take that question. Thank, thank you, Benjamin, for raising these questions. Uh, this is actually very important because uh, cross-platform support, making sure that OMH function on all these platforms, and also at the same time, adding new functionality and adding new plugin to extend the functionality. I think these are all core elements of success of this open mobile hub project. So that's why we actually encourage um, open source community members to help us contribute to add on to it. There's only certain limited resources that we have uh, from the core uh, OMH team. Uh, we cannot do all the implementation for all the services. So that's why we encourage um, the open source community to help us extend the functionality to more services. So some of the example you mentioned, for example, uh, looking at Firebase, uh, support, uh, which is uh, not something that we have in the current roadmap, but of course we will look at um, some of the suggestions that you make and see if we can actually incorporate that into the future. And also you suggested looking at some other map uh, providers. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we have the uh, plugin extensibility uh, built into OMX. So we would expect um, open source company to be able to easily extend uh, OMX to support these new map services, uh, similar to how we actually offer uh, map services to support OpenStreetMap, Mapbox, you know, and also uh, Azure Maps, you know, Google Maps. So um, you can reference some of this, this implementation that we released in open source, uh, look at how we actually done it, and then I think it should be pretty straightforward to implement it for other service providers. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you, uh, Benjamin. We have time for uh, a few more questions. And I would like also to ask you if anyone is interested uh, in engaging with the Open Mobile Hub team in the upcoming uh, days, weeks, and months, how can they do that? Yeah, that's that's a good question, uh, Federica. And I think the uh, um, the upcoming uh, several months, we'll be very busy finishing up the work on OMH 2.0. Uh, and we also are working very closely with Linux Foundation Europe to attend several conferences. Actually, in fact, uh, Diego is going to be attending uh, the Chain React conference in Poland. Uh, and then we will be also uh, attending uh, the React Universe in Poland, as well as the Open Source Summit Europe uh, in Vienna, uh, Austria. So these are the events that we'll be attending in person. So if you're actually coming to the event as well, uh, please send us an email, contact us directly. We should try to uh, meet up in person uh, to see how we can actually work together to support uh, this open source project. Thank you. And following this line, if there is anyone interested in contributing or organization interested in supporting Open Mobile Hub, how can they do that? Take that one. Yeah, there's, there's several things that uh, obviously we, we, we could look at. Uh, the entire code base is on GitHub. So anyone can contribute uh, new codes and, and help us to extend the functionality of OMH. Uh, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of our partners effort also looking at integrating with OMH, making sure the apps can be cross-platform and also enjoy this functionality on OMH. So we also encourage a lot of these uh, apps developer uh, for mobile apps developer to actually start using OMH and start helping us to test it uh, within the apps, as Diego also mentioned at the end of uh, his presentation. Try now and even maybe uh, extend some functionality and 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 report as a success case. We might even feature that as you know in in some of our conferences that we attend to showcase your app as well. So that uh, that's something that I think we can we can collaborate and work together in this community. Yeah, I I would like to add that. Um... As I mentioned before, and you saw in the demos that uh, this is still work in progress, right? So some of the SDKs um, need to be finalized, and and they are in they are not released yet. But we have an early access program, uh, so you can join 
and we will grant you access uh, to the very beginnings. To, so if you want to be on the cutting edge for testing the SDK, especially for storage that is still in the final stages, um, uh, there is uh, uh, the, the documentation. In our documentation, we, uh, you can find how to join the early access program and we will grant you access to these repos. Um, we also hold a TSC meeting every month. So we encourage the community to join us because we, uh, we discuss all these topics, the upcoming features, and any, we cover any questions about the interfaces and any glitches or gotchas about the SDKs. So please join those sessions as well. Thank you. We have uh, another question uh, regarding, again, uh, the container-based aspect. Uh, it can be integrated with a precise real-time healthcare coordinated rescue system in disaster management. Mm, this is an interesting one. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the precise real-time healthcare coordinated in disaster management. Um, but uh, going back to uh, Yayakar, um, this is a works on the client side, right? It's a um, it's a uh, works on the on the Android or React Native side. You are free to implement this uh, if you want to run it on a container. It might be more kind of like the way that I envision if you if you're planning to do some containerization of this, maybe a uh, for running some emulator, perhaps you could run a container and you can incorporate these capabilities. Um, but I'm um, uh, definitely I I'm looking forward to learn more about the use case in more detail and more about the precise real time healthcare coordinated rescue system and 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 see how it applies and how OMH can can help you to achieve your goals. So. I encourage you to reach us out through uh, the, uh, if there is any SDK in particular that you see that applies to your use case, please go ahead and, and, and open up a GitHub issue and let us know uh, and explain more the use case. But uh, thank you for the questions. I hope uh, we can help you. Thank you so much. That was very insightful. Thank you also for uh, the numerous uh, questions. I think we are at time. So thank you so much uh, to the Open Mobile Hub uh, core team for the webinar. And I'm going to give back the floor to Candice from Linux Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to Diego, Preston, and Federica for your time today. And thank you everyone for joining us. Just a quick reminder that this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. We hope you join us for future webinars and have a wonderful day.